Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Good evening and thank you for joining us. More COVID-19 restrictions were lifted today as playgrounds across the city reopened. Jace Mackey spoke with Jordan Newton to discuss the COVID-19 situation in the border city. I'm joined today by Jordan Newton. He's the manager of emergency measures operations with the city of Lloydminster, and he's been dealing with a lot of uh, the COVID-19 situation over the past few months. Thanks for taking some time to talk with me today, Jordan. Oh, thanks for having me. So the big news uh, in Lloydminster today is that the play structures and outdoor uh, dog park are going to be reopening in the city. Can you just talk a little bit about um, the process of reopening those um, facilities? Yeah, so absolutely. So today in the city of Lloydminster for all of our municipal parks, as well as the play structures um, and with both of our school divisions will be opening today. Um, you will notice signage in and around the area um, with some safety guidelines, including sanitization, um, you know, and still ensuring physical distancing and, and taking care of yourself. And uh, while we are very excited at the relaunch of our play structures in our community and allowing families to get out, uh, we still need to remember to be safe. And that goes for the outdoor uh, off-leash dog park on 47th Ave as well. And uh, we just need people to be safe. And when it comes to some of the safety precautions that people should take when they're using the, those facilities now, what are things that they should keep in mind? Yeah, so we, we do want to have people uh, sanitizing their hands uh, before and after use and getting on these play structures. Um, and while kids will be kids, uh, we do need to encourage them to uh, keep space from people outside their household. And um, you, uh, the incident management team is putting together an impact report of COVID-19. Can you just talk a little bit about some of the things that the incident management team is going to be including in that report, some of the data points that they're going to be looking at? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the city is creating a corporate-wide study on the impacts of COVID-19 on our business and our service deliveries to the community. Uh, we hear a lot about we are in unprecedented times, which I agree with. Um, most people have never dealt with this in their lifetime. So it's important for us to capture and document as much information as we can, so we can understand how it has impacted our community, um, both through the pandemic, as well as after whenever we do get to the end of this pandemic. Uh, so what you'll see in this report is we want to understand um, something like water usage. How has our utility usage changed for the city throughout this? Has our water usage gone up through the pandemic or has it has it gone down? And um, it's the need to truly understand how um, this pandemic has affected uh, the whole community. And that is why it was decision was made to present this report uh, to the community so everyone has a good idea. And I know as we start to reopen, different businesses are given the ability to reopen with certain restrictions. Uh, and I know that the city is working with businesses. What should businesses do if they kind of maybe need some resources or is there somewhere that they could get from either the municipal government or from the government of Saskatchewan with help reopening their uh, businesses? Yeah, absolutely. So the city of Lloydminster is consistent and aligned with uh, Saskatchewan's reopening plans. Um, but the city of Lloydminster is here to work with our business community. So if you have questions, if you need any guidance or um, even up to date uh, reopen plans, please call the city or email the city's um, business hotline and go to the COVID-19 website and we'll be there to assist and answer as many questions as we can. Um, we do have an influx of calls generally during reopening, but we'll make sure that we get back in a timely manner. And just before we go, I just wanted to ask, um, at the beginning of everything that was going on with the pandemic, the message from all levels of government was stay home uh, as much as you can and practice social distancing, wash your hands. Now, as things start to open up, people might be in and around the community a lot more. What's the main message for people as we're still dealing with this virus? No, that, that, that's a great question and it's it's something that um, we're all facing um, as business owners as well as residents of this community um, is we need to get out and support our community during this time um, but we need to truly remember the social distancing the physical distancing needs through this um, so while 
it is safe now to go out into the community. Um, please remember to, um, you know, make sure you wash your hands and, and keep distance and try and keep your uh, grouping to your immediate household or extended household as much as possible. Perfect. Thank you Sa for taking some time to talk with me today. It was great to get some of the information from you, Jordan. Yeah, thanks for having me and have a great weekend. Thank you, you too. COVID-19 continues to change things rapidly in agriculture. Our Eric Bay has the latest on Alberta's beef sector. Despite processing plants working at or near full capacity, including Cargill High River, which is currently operating at 90% capacity, there is still 130,000 head of cattle backlog. Alberta beef producers is still looking to the Alberta government for aid in the beef sector. We have continued to put pressure on the provincial government first to follow up with a commitment to the provincial portion of funding for the Agri Recovery Program, which they did shortly after, and more recently to expand financial support for cattle producers to include the cow calf and backgrounding sectors. We asked the provincial government to provide funding to reduce the cost in livestock price insurance premiums for calf and feeder cattle insurance and to support the elimination of the reference margin limit on agri stability, an adjustment that we think would make agri stability much more effective for cow calf producers. ABP has received responses from the Agriculture and Forestry Minister's Office to these requests. The Minister has expressed an understanding of our positions and has committed to working with AFSC on improvements to the price insurance program and working with his federal, provincial, and territorial counterparts for improvements to egg stability. Despite the assurances from the minister that he is working on to improve risk management programs and will monitor prices going into the fall, we have not received any commitment of funding for cow calf and backgrounding sectors at this time. And it doesn't appear likely that there will be any announcement of funding in the near future. The provincial government has established the fed cattle set aside program and multiple beef groups around the province have been working together with the government to determine the best time to implement the program. One of the main points we continue to make is that while there is a backlog of cattle right now, we expect the bigger issue to start as we enter the summer months and more cattle move into the system. Therefore, we encourage the program be launched in the summer. The other key point we've been making is that while Program, while the program to cover extraordinary feed costs is important, the bigger issue is market. While we have been regularly making these points known to the government of Alberta, both through regular calls and written letters to the minister, they have made the decision to implement a two-pronged approach. Meanwhile, ABP is encouraging producers to consider WL PIP to protect themselves from possible market changes this fall. To, to ensure the floor on and for my operation is is pretty important. If I if I look at those premiums and those insurable indexes and think I can live with with uh, with X amount of dollars a pound, and I can live with those premiums, I can ensure to protect the bottom, and then uh, then the top side is open. So if if cattle are, you know, if I insure them for two bucks a pound, and 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 things things uh, things are good, and and maybe. Hopefully we we overreacted to all this, you know. In their two and a quarter, two fifteen, the upside is you know there's there's ten cents or fifteen cents a pound that that uh, is is there. So you know future con contracts and other things are another option. But but that's that's what I like about it is it leaves the it leaves the top side open. Eric Bay, primetime local news. One local organization is working with kids to write letters to residents at a long-term care facility. Jasmine King has more. I'm joined here with Amanda Warner, and she is with Remax here in Lloydminster, but you are also the founder of the project named Project We Care. Can you explain to me what this project is? Hi, Jasmine. Thanks for having us on. Um, the project We Care was just an uh, idea that Jackie Gartner, uh, a colleague of mine, and I had come up with one day, and it was just we were looking for something that would help bring seniors a little bit of comfort during this time um, and we tried to look for something that we could do because of social distancing obviously we can't go there in person or anything like that so we were hoping that something like project we care might 
be able to make a bit of a difference and still respect all the social distancing guidelines. And for somebody who doesn't know, what is the main goal of Project We Care? Well, our main goal is to help show seniors and residents of long care uh, facilities in Lloyd just that we're thinking about them, that they're not alone. I mean, definitely this whole pandemic thing has brought a whole nother layer of um, separation and I'm sure anxiety and loneliness. And so we just wanted to find a way to reach out and let them know that, you know, we're still here and we're thinking about them and we can kind of be together even though we're apart. And how will it work? Well, what we were hoping is to have some local kids in the community um, make like a poem or a drawing or even just a little note and uh, email them to us and we would print them all off and deliver them to the long-term care facilities in Lloyd and maybe some of the seniors will um, reply and maybe even make it sort of a pen pal thing. And why did you really want to get kids involved with this project? Well we were really hoping for kids because one they're really creative and um, they're not really super busy right now so we're hoping that you know they'll take five minutes out of their day and you know like we said make us a drawing or a poem or something and then I know that will really brighten the day of, of a lot of seniors in our community. And you know you just mentioned it it's important for the seniors you know to make them feel better especially during this time when they can't see all their loved ones. Is that one of the main important reasons that you really wanted to do this? Yeah, absolutely. We were really hoping that it would bring them some comfort to know that we're still, even though we can't be together, or maybe we can't visit them, that we're still there. And hopefully it would just show them that, you know, there's still a lot of connection and compassion um, out there. And that, that that's really what I was hoping that we would get across. Is there anything that you're hoping the kids really write about when they write to these seniors? Well, we had some ideas, but I mean, kids are very creative. They'll come up with their own ideas, but just, you know, to even talk to them like they're a friend and just, you know, tell them what they've been doing or what they miss or, you know, a fun trip they took or something that they're going to do in the future, you know, or a drawing. I've gotten lots of drawings to uh, submitted so far. So, I mean, just whatever they can think up. Um, kids are, like I said, kids are super creative. So now you mentioned that you would like to see a pen pal program really come from this project is that the main goal and what you're ho really hoping the kids take away from this yeah i would like to see that but i think that's a little bit lofty i'm just hoping that some of the kids will will like i said make me a submission and and we would bring it but i i would really like to see something like that happen i know um, there has been initiatives like this in other communities that have started and when we brainstormed this idea I see bigger things, but I guess we'll have to wait and see where this is headed. Now, is there any deadlines at all for submissions? Yes, so we're kind of on a tight deadline now. We've been um, open for about a week and a half or so, but Monday is the deadline for us to receive all submissions. But if one was a little bit late, that's okay too, because I'd still print it off and bring it. And how can people contact you if they want to submit and their kids want to submit something? So I'm hoping that um, with social distancing, we can't obviously do things in person, but if they would email it to me um, or to my colleague, Jackie, um, my email is amandawarner at shaw.ca. Uh, and then, you know, we would save them all and print them out and bring them to the long-term care, long care facilities. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Amanda. Thank you, Jasmine. I appreciate this very much. Thanks and best of luck. Now it's time for this week's edition of What's Open. Here's Heather Clegas. A number of 
of restaurants and eateries in Lloydminster opened up this week, including right here at the Lloyd X. The Exhibition Grill is open Monday to Friday, 11 to 2, so you can dine in for lunch. They also do still have their takeout available as well. A number of other restaurants opened in Lloydminster. The Canadian Brew House is open. They're at 50% capacity. They've got hand sanitizer. They've got arrows on the floor marking the different directions that you should go. They've also got their patio open, weather permitting as well. And also Montana's reopened here in the city of Lloydminster. So plenty of great options if you're looking for a delicious meal out. If you're looking for home decor or some new pieces of furniture for your home or maybe for the cabin, Border City Furniture in downtown Lloydminster has reopened. They underwent some renovations and now they're back to regular hours, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So you can stop in and take a look at everything they have. Whether you need a sofa, a dining room set, they also have a great selection of Canadian-made solid wood bedroom suites. A lot of great options just reopened in downtown Lloydminster, Border City Furniture. And you should start working on that beautiful piece of art that you can create on your sidewalk with chalk because starting on Monday, the Olive Tree will be accepting your submissions for their chalk competition. And they've teamed up with some great local businesses for some great prizes. You've got a chance to win a bike thanks to the new Lloydminster Nissan and thanks to Walking on Water, there's going to be a really cool prize pack as well. For all the details, you can check out the Olive Tree on Facebook. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, we hope you stay safe and stay healthy. After posting 107 points in his final AJHL season, Sherwood Park Crusaders captain Arjun Atwal joins our Evan Kenny to break it down. Joining me today is the AJHL's leading scorer, the AJHL's MVP, and as well the captain of the Sherwood Park Crusaders, Arjun Atwal. Arjun, thanks for taking this time. Yeah, anytime. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. Now, for yourself, you had 107 points last season uh, after having 66 the season before. Do you think there was anything different you did uh, during the offseason to really help you take off this year? Uh, not a whole lot different, just uh, kind of more consistent. Obviously, the year before, I uh, had, had an injury that kind of obviously set me back, but uh, I was pretty pleased with my 19-year-old uh, season and my points per game. But obviously, this past year was uh, really good. Fortunately, it was cut short, but yeah, nothing, nothing too different. I just kind of focused on little things more and kind of mental aspect of the game and, and kept growing. Now for yourself, what was this season like? Obviously ranked number one in Canada to end the regular season. And unfortunately, you guys didn't quite get to make it uh, play playoff games. But what was the regular season like getting to go through something like you guys did? Uh, regular season was fantastic. Uh, First off, a great, uh, great coaching staff and, and management team and ownership, all that. And uh, the, the team was just a great, uh, basically an in, inseparable group and, and probably the tightest group of people I've ever been around, let alone a team. So, yeah, it was uh, every day was a blast. And obviously when you're winning, things are that much better. And, and just the chemistry and, and the strength we had as a, as a team was fantastic. So I enjoyed every minute of it. Obviously, I wish it lasted longer, but... Um, it is what it is, and, and I'm, I'm happy about it. Now, unfortunately, like I mentioned before, you guys didn't get a chance to, to take part in playoffs as you had that first round by, and obviously playoffs were cut short. You know, how heart-wrenching was that for you guys and disappointing to end your AJHL career on that note? Yeah, obviously, uh, it's, it's tough. Tough pill to swallow when uh, the first couple of days were obviously the hardest and just kind of – setting your mind to it and kind of figuring out what this was even outside of hockey and what this pandemic was <laughs> obviously now it's a little bit easier to understand than the big picture but at the time uh probably one of the toughest things uh, I've, I've had been through throughout my life so far and uh not a great feeling but uh I've kind of accepted it and everybody's kind of moved on now on on a brighter note after the season you were named the AJHL's MVP uh, just take me through that and, you know, what you were feeling when that got announced. Yeah, obviously it's a, it's a great honor, uh, something that you, everybody works towards. And then that's, it's a big achievement in, in my books. And it was one of the goals I set for myself before the year is to achieve something like that. And uh, I'm very happy I could do it. Obviously I can do it without my team and, and all the success we had, but uh, yeah, great achievement for myself. And uh, I was happy to do so.
you know, you mentioned your team, a guy that you played alongside the entire year uh, was Carter Savoy. What was it like getting to play uh, aside him, rather, and especially with him, you know, expectations for the draft and whatnot this year? Yeah, uh, obviously it's great. We have that chemistry. I've known him for the past two seasons. Now we've been playing with him quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, Sav was great, great teammate, great, great kid, and pretty easy playing alongside him. He's a great finisher, and, and he clicked well. I, I I see the ice pretty well and, and make plays, and we, we fed off each other very well. And, uh, yeah, it was a blast. I'm excited to see what happens in the draft whenever it takes place, and, and I'm excited for him. And now finally for yourself, just recently you announced that you're committing uh, to the University of Calgary Dinos to go play hockey there next season. Uh, you know, what, what's this excitement like for yourself and, you know, what's going through your head? Yeah, uh, obviously I'm very excited. Um, Calgary's uh, not my hometown, but it's pretty close. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be a new experience for me. Uh, it's a next step in my hockey career and academically as well. So, um, I'm excited to get back into school and see how that goes and, and obviously take the next step in my hockey career and keep developing and then see where that can take me. Well, Arjun, I appreciate you taking this time and uh, chatting with me. It's a pleasure having you on. Yeah, anytime. Uh, thank you for having me.